You realize that this world is, is becoming more and more tech focused and cities have two options. They can either embrace that reality or they can uh, ignore it to their, to their peril and to the peril of their residents. <laughs>
you're a conservative. It yeah. seems to me that you're sort of what the future of conservatism is. What, what does that actually mean to you? Like, what are your kind of guiding principles? You, you know, I grew up, uh, I was born in 1977, so I, I grew up sort of in the 80s. 76, you're, there you're, you you're a young buck. There you go. Uh, my dad was mayor in 1985 yep. of Miami. And I grew up sort of in the Reagan years. So for me, sort of being a Reagan Republican was someone that was strong on national defense. Um, you know, for me, I believe in having a balanced budget, even though that's something that our federal government has not been able to do for a long time. Are you guys balanced here? We are. We actually have a surplus. We have a $150 million surplus in the city of Miami. We have the second highest bond rating we've ever had and the highest we've ever had in the history under my leadership. So right. it's a double A plus. So, uh, you know, I believe in fiscal responsibility for governments. Uh, I think governments should live within their means. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, governments should be there to facilitate, not obstruct. And oftentimes uh, they are obstructionists. Uh, you know, I, but as a conservative, I also, and as a young person, and someone who sees even young conservatives uh, and, 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 and young liberals come up concerned about the environment. So I think that's something that, mm -hmm. you know, we have to have a, a better conversation on. Immigration is another issue that, you know, we're a city of immigrants. Uh, we're a country of immigrants, you know, and that's, a, 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 you know, another issue. I think we need to have a healthier conversation on than the one that we're having right now in, in the sort of national landscape. Yeah. Where does uh, the Bitcoin stuff fit in this new future conservative Mecca that we've got going well, here. I think you just Bitcoin, did the big conference. Yeah, we just did the biggest, the largest Bitcoin conference in, in the world. We also had FTX, which is a large uh, a crypto trading platform out of Hong Kong, uh, name the, uh, the arena where the Miami Heat played, $200 million name, naming deal. We had blockchain.com headquarter in the city of Miami, 300 jobs. And El eToro, which is... Don't forget locals.com moved here. And locals.com as well, and eToro as well. So, I mean, we've had a ton of, 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 of crypto... Uh, companies moving over here and blockchain and, and Bitcoin companies moving over here because we believe we were sort of the David in this uh, David and Goliath story, right? Yeah. But we believe that uh, to be uh, sort of to have that transformational moment, we had to step outside of the conventional box. Yeah. And I thought that Bitcoin and crypto was our way of doing that. Uh, you know, we're the first city in the world, uh, sort of the first city in the United States, second city in the world to put to Satoshi's white paper on our mm -hmm. website. Uh, you know, we're the first city in the world to, to begin the process of allowing our employees to get paid in Bitcoin. Uh, of allowing. Uh, do you get do you get all of it, or is it just like you have good people around you? Like, because because some of the tech stuff, the the high end, high level tech stuff, is a lot. No, I get it. I get yeah. it. I get it because I, I sort of have finance background. Um, uh, my dad was an engineer, uh, is an engineer. My, my grandfather was an engineer as well. Um, so I get the mathematics behind it. Uh, I get the principle behind it. I was actually part of the Florida Blockchain Foundation when it began, mm -hmm. and I'm actually, actually part of the, the Florida Blockchain Task Force named by the CFO of Florida uh, to promulgate. Uh, state regulations and laws uh, to hope, hopefully, to, to continue to bring crypto to Miami, so it's and to Florida. Do you have other mayors in either in Florida or in the rest of the country that are kind of pissed? They're kind of jealous, like this guy's making it happen, and we're not either because we're handicapped by our own state governments or whatever it might be. You know, the ones that probably would be pissed are not calling. You know, <laughs> yeah. I think I think they feel like they're. I, yeah, I can't speak for them. They may feel like they're boxing. They may believe some of the policies that their their cities are promulgating that I think are are not good for their cities. But I can tell you, I've gotten a ton of mayors that call me from across the country. Uh, and, and chambers of commerce from across the country that call me and say, hey, how do we replicate what you're doing down there? And for us, it's, it, you know, there are some things that are hard to replicate. Yeah. You know, Miami's kind of hard to replicate. But there are other things that I think are very basic. You know, for us, we have basically our, our formula for success is three things. Keep taxes as low as humanly possible. Uh, while other cities defund police, we're investing in our police and we have the highest uh, number of police officers ever. So public safety is incredibly important to us. It's something that we sell being one of the safest big cities in America. And the third thing is we focus on quality of life. We know the fundamental truth that nobody can live yesterday again. So the most important decision that we all make in our lives is where we are this very moment, where we're gonna be tomorrow, where we're gonna be the day after. And if you create the kind of city that really respects that decision, uh, for example, we have 555 homeless in the city of Miami. We wanna to get to functional zero, which means we wanna be one of the first big cities in America not to have any homeless. I mean, I've been here for five days. I have not seen one homeless person. Yeah. I come from LA. It's very, very different. It's, a, it's very different. And I think uh, you know, we've done a variety of things over a number of years to get to that point. Um, and we want to get to zero. So like what, for, for example, what's one thing you've done on the homeless well, that we, I can bring back with me to California? We, we have something called the Homeless Trust. Yeah. Uh, we, we spend about $50 million a year. It's a, it's a, it's a food and beverage tax. That's a basically a tourist tax that's not paid for by our mm -hmm. residents. 
uh, but it generates money and we use that money to, to build facilities uh, to treat homeless in a comprehensive way. There are obviously a lot of them have mental health and drug addiction issues and vocational training so that they can leave uh, you know, a, a shelter with the ability to make a living and reintegrate into society. So they get mental health counseling, they get uh, drug addiction counseling, and they also get vocational training. When you see the mayors of say, LA, San Francisco, Seattle, Portland, all the progressive mayors that are just raising taxes and yeah. then you see the reverse of all of the policies sure. that you've got working here, do you ever think maybe I could just call these guys and explain like basic economics to them or something? Like, like I just never can understand the disconnect between sure. the, the things that they say and then the results that end up happening. Well, I can tell you a lot of them are my friends, um, and, and and I'm gonna be if I'm reelected in November, which hopefully will be a non-event. Got Willie? You got elected with 86 percent, and. Uh, I mean, what are we going to do? We do 92? Yeah, what do you think? Yeah, listen, you, you got to go up, man. Yeah. That's, that's it. That's, I'll tell you a funny story about that later. <laughs> but uh, I think, you know, if re-elected, I'm going to be the president of the U.S. Conference of Mayors. So one of the cool things is um, my, my colleagues, those mayors, have, have chosen me to be the president of all the mayors in the United States. And I think it's a, a really wonderful opportunity to take this formula that has been successful in Miami and export it to urban America. Uh, I think there's some things that we can do on gun violence. There's some things we can do on homelessness. And frankly, you know, I'm willing to talk to anybody, any mayor, and give them advice, uh, you know, but sometimes I think it's hard because it's either what they believe, which is sort of antithetical to what I think is a growth policy, or what the residents believe, which oftentimes make it hard because they're sort of boxed in. Right. Where does DeSantis fit into all this? It seems like, a, from again, from me, 3,000 miles away, that's the best governor in the country right now. Yeah, so he's, you know, I think he, he, he did some things that were very um, sort of counter-narrative, right, and, and opened the state up a lot earlier than a lot of people thought were, uh, would have been a good idea, and it turned out to be great for the city, and certainly great for the state, and he's gotten a ton of kudos on that. And I think, you know, I, I, I'm pretty sure that if he, he's reelected in 2022, which I think is also, you know, he's got a very good shot of that, uh, 2024, I wouldn't be surprised if he you puts think, his name in the ring. I, I, I saw a little glimmer in the eye. I think you might know something there. Well, you know, what, what is that, where does that put you then? You know, look, I, I've, um, you know, again, I have to get reelected and, and obviously I have a year and a half as, as hopefully president of the U.S. Conference of Mayors, but, I, you know, I've talked about this in, in the past. I, there's only a few things that I'd be interested in doing beyond being mayor, which has been an amazing thing. Being governor of the state of Florida in 2026, or that's something that I would be, that I would certainly consider. Does it ever seem odd to you that you're governor of all things, like somebody who gets it, like you get business and all of those things? I know there's a lot of good people, usually kind of right-leaning, who just don't want to go into government because they don't believe that government is everything. So then they just don't do it, and then we get worse and worse politicians. Well, that's part of the problem. Yeah. Government isn't everything and shouldn't yeah. be everything. And I think part of the issue we have in our society is people think that government needs to solve all our problems. It's not the way it works. Government is, was supposed to be created for a limited amount of reasons. Uh, the things that were good at our core competencies. And then, you know, when you have good leaders that lead in government, they can work with the private sector, with the philanthropic sectors to deal with big problems uh, like homelessness and others. But I think, uh, you know, there's this misperception that you just keep growing the size of government um, and that, that it can somehow solve a bunch of problems that government has been historically unable to do. It put band-aids on problems it's, it's created, right? Like exactly. That, that's pretty much it. Exactly. What or make the problems worse. Or, or make them worse. What, what, what was, what's been sort of unexpected as this all has blown up here? On, I guess either on good or bad, like just generally like so much at once. Yeah, you know, for me, if you would have told me on December 3rd, right, that the next day I was going to put out a tweet uh, that was going to be, the, they call it the tweet heard around the world. Yeah. The, how can I help tweet uh, yeah. in terms of making Miami Silicon Valley? And that that was going to get 2.7 million impressions organic. I, honestly, I don't think I knew of you until then. And that day, suddenly everyone I knew in the tech world was like, that's the guy, that's the city, let's go. And then it's just been, yeah. it, It's been crazy. And then yeah. ever since then, I mean, I, I found what I call in Twitter uh, a portal of positivity. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and I tweeted 800 more times in the month of December. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, which got 27 million. Generally, impressions. that's not a good thing, but in your case, it's okay. It's usually not a good thing. Yeah. And, and, and it, you know, and, and it's gonna sound really hokey pokey, what I'm gonna tell you, but in many ways, I found my voice. You know what I mean? It kind of sounds, you know, uh, book clubbish, you know, but I, I really did. I, I was able to really express myself, be myself, without the, the usual concerns and worries that, hey, am I gonna make a mistake? Am I gonna say something wrong? You know, usually if you look at elected officials in social media, it's very antiseptic. It's like they went and they cut a ribbon or they yeah. went and they did this, you know. They don't have a personality. They can't really express themselves because they're afraid. They're afraid of making a mistake, of saying the wrong thing. And at some point I just said, you know what? I'm gonna go all in. Let's see how this goes, Yeah. <laughs> you know? And it's been great. It's, it's, it's been a lot of fun. 
I, I've, uh, you know, it's part of what allowed me to get into the crypto space as well at the level that I did because I was, I was really getting great feedback. Yeah. And I said, you know what, I gotta do more. W were you kind of shocked? So you put that tweet out and then it was basically everyone that I know in the tech world was just like, that's it. Were you just shocked that they immediately were like, what can I do? And then, and then you basically just set up meetings with people, right? I, I was shocked, but it was also a tremendous uh, learning experience, right? In the sense that I realized what this world is all about now. This world is, is highly, highly disruptive. Let me, I, I mean, I gotta say this, I don't even know what camera to look into. Yeah. This world is highly- Somewhere, high, somewhere over there. There, here. Yeah. This world is highly, highly disruptive yeah. to the point where uh, the paradigm can shift on you in, in, in a second. Yeah. And I think that's what some of these cities are not completely understanding. You know, and, 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 I, and I think that as you see the, what I call this confluence of capital coming from New York, Silicon Valley and Miami's geo position, right? Uh, close to South America and Central America, close to uh, the Middle East, Israel and, 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 uh, and, and Europe. We're sort of in the middle of all that. We're the place that can really be that global mega city that can be what I call the capital of capital. The place where if you wanna build a business or start a business, you gotta be living in Miami. Low taxes. Is that, I mean, is that, does it all sort of boil down to that at the beginning? It, 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 that's a part of the equation, but it's yeah. not all of the equation. I yeah. mean, I think for us it was low taxes. It's incredible weather. Yeah. It's incredible amenities from a city perspective. Now the restaurants, you know, everything is sort of coming together. Mm -hmm. And I think, and this is going to sound again, sort of crazy, but it's, it's being welcoming, right? I, I can't tell you the number of people that have told me, look, I, I, I would live in. I would stay living in one of these cities. I'm still paying a lot of taxes. I'm not getting the services. I'm not getting a return on my investment. I'm not getting any stuff. But on top of you're just talking right to me right, now. <laughs> but on top of everything yeah. else, yeah. I'm made to feel like I'm not a good person, right? Like the the government officials, the f Elon Musk, the let's criticize Mark Zuckerberg for giving seventy five million dollars to a hospital for them wanting to name it after him. Let's let's push Amazon out of our city. I mean that just doesn't make any sense. And what we've been doing is the opposite. We're like, okay, you know, we're com you know, keep coming. And we're creating thousands of high paying jobs in our community that are gonna have a tri-generational impact. Tri-generational impact, it impacts the person who has a job and their spouse. It impacts their children and their educational opportunities. And it's gonna impact their children's children. How do you make sure that the people that are the natives here in the midst of this, as some prices rise and things like that, don't get pushed out of communities yeah. that they're in and, and that sort of thing? Yeah, you know, it, it, it's a hard challenge, you know, because uh, and I, I was actually doing an interview recently where, where, uh, with, a, with one of our local papers, and, and I said, look, it's hard because you know, the, the, the first thing is people uh, sort of complain that there's a lot of income inequality in cities, which is true. You know, it's a problem in urban America. And then you start bringing high paying jobs and they say, well, you're gonna push out. So it, it's like, well, what do you want? Do you want high paying jobs or do you want, or, or, or so how do we deal with income inequality if we don't bring high paying jobs? And I think, right. I think that, that what ties those two things is you got to create an educational framework mm -hmm. from you know young children to uh, university students to uh, young adults who are left out of the tech ecosystem to even the elderly to create a framework where they can be integrated into this economy. And so we do it uh, with child savings accounts to teach financial literacy. Uh, every single child in kindergarten in the city of Miami gets a child savings account that we fund. Mm -hmm. We do it through a coding program we just raised through the How Can I Help campaign. $70,000 for a coding program in the inner city for robotics and coding. Um, we're helping facilitate a tremendous amount of philanthropy to universities and even working with some major universities, marquee universities to try to get partnerships, uh, you know, maybe bridge that reputational gap that we may have. You know, we're doing a tremendous amount of stuff on upskilling, uh, either through vocational training uh, or through companies like Winco that was bought by BrainStation. And then for the elderly, we're working with apps like Papa uh, to make sure that it, it's you know it's relevant to them this tech boom. Yeah, it's you mentioned the elderly. I was going to ask you, like I think a lot of people think of Florida, but Miami specifically. I tweeted a Golden Girls clip at you yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They think, like, oh, yeah, but this is this not, what, yeah, yeah, yeah that, they're not going to do the Golden Girls theme yeah, song. Yeah, the that's not going to be the official no, no, theme no, no, song no. of Miami. All right, no, no. I'll, I'll keep working on yeah, you yeah, on that one. But but that people think of Florida as like, oh, that's where old people go to retire. That was our reputation. Yeah, our reputation was we're a sun and fun place or retirement place. And I think, you know, what I tried to do with the How Can I Help Tweet and Beyond was, was you know, I don't know if you've ever seen the cruise ships turn. Okay, when a, when, when a like cruise, literally, turn. literally when it yeah. turns. When a cruise ship comes into a port, it comes in this way, and they actually yeah. got to turn it uh -huh. to go outward. It actually takes forever, <laughs> right? Because you're going to, it's a huge, massive thing. It's like a city that you're turning. I literally got every single tugboat in Miami <laughs> and turned what was the reputation of Miami, which is like a cruise ship, turning it as fast as possible. So we could create two new industries in technology and finance that are high paying 
and they're going to propel us into the future and make us a city of the future. All right, two more things for you, and then, and then I'm going to join you in just a moment. We're going to flip the script here. Right, I love it. Um, Cafecito. So first off, yeah, so first off, I'm, I'm moving my company locals down here. We're, we're hiring right now. It. We're hiring right now. What, when, yeah, what can we do to get word out there? I mean, what kind of resources are there as companies move down here? Well, first of all, what we're doing right now is yeah. the number one thing we can do, which is, you know, you have to, I've learned after 12 years, this is why these podcasts are so, uh, have gotten so much, uh, you know, play, right, is, is because we're in the storytelling business, right? I'm in the storytelling business. I realized this after yeah. 12 years yeah. of being in politics, like I am now a storyteller. Right. And the story is the narrative of what Miami is and what Miami is going to be. And so just this podcast and, and, and the one that we're going to do on the Cafecito Tech Talk, continue to tell that story to a point where people may have doubted it at the beginning. You know, ah, this, is, this is just going to be a COVID thing or this is just going to be a, you know, in the summer, everybody will leave, you know. But when you keep telling the story over and over again, you pile on success after success after success, the perception becomes a reality. You marry perception with reality. So that, that's, that's really important. I think one of the things that we want them to know is we're setting up funds. We have a fund already through the Downtown Development Authority that gives, as opposed to kicking out a company, we give companies $50,000 a year for three years oh, wow. that locate in downtown Miami. We're hopefully creating a fund called uh, Venture Miami, uh, which will be hopefully an early stage seed fund, uh, which we're gonna have uh, somewhere between two and $5 million a year over the next two years to help early stage companies uh, grow, which oftentimes, you know, they're the ones that have the hardest time, you know, with the mom and pop. And so that, that, so we're trying to do everything we can to, to, to accelerate this, this, this uh, ecosystem growth. Then my final question for you is, if I make the move, if I just can't take Cali anymore, I make the move myself, can you hook me up with a house like this? When you make the move, <laughs> uh, we will do everything that we can. <laughs> we like to have yeah. that. All right, I'll have take that, it. I'll we take like it. That red carpet service. We call it, you know, concierge service. So, yeah. So we'll, we'll, that's pretty much the limit of what a mayor can say. Well, I can't give you the house, but I can put you in touch with people who may want to sell you a house like this. Mayor Suarez, thank you so much. Awesome. If you're looking for more honest and thoughtful conversations about tech instead of nonstop yelling, check out our tech playlist. And if you want to watch full interviews on a variety of topics, check out our full episode playlist. They're right over here. And to get notified of all future videos, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell.